Welcome to our second episode on how shapes can be transformed. Last time we learned how we can use the word transformation as a general term to describe four different ways shapes like polygons can be altered. One of the useful things that working with transformations can do is push our brain to visualize shapes in different positions and orientations. We focused our efforts on how shapes can be shifted or translated, which means only change position. In this video, we'll follow up with objects being transformed by rotation. Rotation is pretty easy to see all around us. Feeling lucky? Spinning top? Keeping cool? Go for a spin on your bike. And of course, the Earth rotates on its axis. This familiar word can be used to describe one of the transformations we see with shapes as well. At this point, we'll look at three specific ways we can describe the rotation of a shape. Can you guess what they might be? A little creative thinking would lead you to the following. The direction the object is rotating. How far the object rotates. And the point around which the shape rotates, sometimes referred to as the axis. When it comes to the direction of a rotating shape, we make reference to the traditional clock. From the 12 at the top of the clock, the moving hands turn to the right. This is the normal direction of movement, so it's referred to as clockwise. Since the movement in the other direction is backwards, it is called counterclockwise. How do we express how far the object rotates? Can the units we learn for measuring linear distances be applied? When it comes to how far something rotates, our measurement relates to making one full turn. It's also common to refer to a complete rotation as 360 degrees. Anytime you do a full turn snowboarding or in gymnastics, etc., it's called a 360. This triangle's rotation would be described as one full turn or 360 degrees in a clockwise direction. Anything less than a full rotation can be described using fractions. So this is a half turn or 180 degree rotation in the counterclockwise direction. Then a quarter turn or 90 degrees in the clockwise direction. These are of course the markings you would find on a protractor when you are looking for more accurate angles of rotation. Tools that cut angles also have similar markings. So far, we've used the center of the object as the rotation point. Now we'll see what happens when we move an object around a point outside of the shape. We'll rotate this triangle around the point noted in the center of this grid one quarter turn in the clockwise direction. Here is the triangle and center point labeled with letters. We refer to the original shape, triangle ABC, as the figure, shown in blue. Once rotated, the new shape formed is called the image, shown here in orange with new markings on the letters. When a shape is rotated in this way, each point of the triangle would create a circle if we trace their pathway for one full turn. The A point, for example, would create the blue circle. We could continue to rotate our triangle in the clockwise direction and add two more images at one half and three quarters rotation. As we learn with translations, any polygon could be rotated. This shape is being rotated a quarter turn counterclockwise. But we could also suggest it has been moved three quarters of a turn in the clockwise direction. Both ways get us to the same image. There are three ways we describe shapes being transformed by rotation. The direction they rotate, clockwise or counterclockwise, what portion of a turn they make, described as a fraction or number of degrees, and the point we want to use to rotate the shape around, also called an axis. We have now learned about translation and rotation. In the next segment, we'll be looking at reflection as our next type of transformation.